Aberfoyle, Stirling. Aberfoyle, is a village in the historic county and registration county of Perthshire and the council area of Stirling, Scotland. The settlement lies northwest of Glasgow. The parish of Aberfoyle takes its name from this village, and had a population of 1,065 at the 2011 census. The town is situated on the River Forth at the foot of Craigmore, 387 metres high. Since 1885, when the Duke of Montrose constructed a road over the eastern shoulder of Craigmore to join the older road at the entrance of the Trossachs Pass, Aberfoyle has become the alternative route to the Trossachs and Loch Katrine. This road, known as the Duke's Road or Duke's Pass, was opened to the public in 1931 when the Forestry Commission acquired the land. Lockhart, about west of Aberfoyle, lies 40 metres above the sea. It is long, including the narrows at the east end, and one mile, one and a half kilometre, broad out towards the west end is Alien Gorham, the Green Isle, and near the northwestern shore are the Falls of Leadert. The loch's northern shores are dominant had be the mountain ridge of Bain and Fhagori, 616 metres. Two miles northwest of Loch Art is Loch Chon, at 90 metres above the sea, long, and about half a mile broad. Dot it drains by the Avon due to Loch Art, which is drained in turn by the Forth. Aberfoyle supposedly originates from the Britannic Celtic, Aberpol or Aberpuil, Scottish Gaelic, Abarpuil, meaning, place at the mouth of the Puil Burn, the Pow Burn enters the river Forth at Aberfoyle. Historically, alternative spellings such as Aberfoyle, Aberfuel, Aberfoyle and Aberfoyle have been recorded before the current spelling became accepted by the 20th century. The slate quarries on Craigmore, which operated from the 1820s to the 1950s, are now defunct. At its peak, this was a major industry. Other industries included an ironworks, established in the 1720s, as well as wool spinning and a lint mill. From 1882, the village was served by Aberfoyle Railway Station. The terminus of the Strathendrick and Aberfoyle Railway which connected to Glasgow via Dumbarton or Kirkintillic. The station closed to passenger traffic in 1951, and the remaining freight services ceased in 1959. The above industries have since died out, and Aberfoyle is supported mainly by the forestry, industry and tourism. Visitors were first attracted to Aberfoyle and the surrounding area after the publication of The Lady of the Lake by Sir Walter Scott in 1810. The poem describes the beauty of Loch Katrine. Aberfoyle describes itself as the gateway to the Trossachs, and is well situated for visitors to access attractions such as Loch Lomond and Inchmahome Priory at the Lake of Menteith. A tourist information office run by Visit Scotland sits in the centre of town, offering free information selling souvenirs and acting as a booking office for many of the local B&Bs and hotels. Aberfoyle Golf Club was built in 1860 and is located just south of town near the Rob Roy restaurant. Aberfoyle is also part of the Loch Lomond and the Trossachs National Park. Aberfoyle is also home to the largest Go Ape Adventure course in the UK, featuring the longest death slide, or zip line, in the UK. Aberfoyle has connections to many historical figures such as Rob Roy and Mary, Queen of Scots. Robert Roy McGregor was born at the head of nearby Loch Katrine, and his well-known cattle-stealing exploits took him all around the area surrounding Aberfoyle. It is recorded, for example, that in 1691, the McGregors raided every barn in the village of Kippen and stole all the villagers' livestock. There currently stands a tree in the village that McGregor was reputed to have climbed and hidden to escape the clutches of the law. Also, Mary, Queen of Scots, visited nearby Inchmahome Priory often as a child and during her short reign. She also used the priory during her short reign, particularly in 1547, where she felt safe from the English army. However, the most local historical figure is the Reverend Robert Kirk, born in 1644. It was the Reverend Kirk who provided the first translation into Gaelic of the Book of Psalms, however, he is better remembered for the publication of his book The Secret Commonwealth of Elves, Fawns and fairies in 1691. Kirk had long been researching fairies, and the book collected several personal accounts and stories of folk who claimed to have encountered them. It was after this, while Kirk was minister of Aberfoyle Parish, that he died in unusual circumstances. Kirk had long believed that the local Dune Hill was the gateway to the secret commonwealth, or the land of the fairies. It was a place that Kirk visited often, taking daily walks there from his manse. The story goes that the fairies of Dune Hill were angry with the Ref. Kirk for going into the domain of the Unseelie Court, where he had been warned not to go, and decided to imprison him in Dune Hill. For one night in May 1692, the Reverend Kirk went out for a walk to the hill, in his nightshirt. 
Some accounts claim that he simply vanished, however he suddenly collapsed. He was found and brought home, but died soon afterwards. He was buried in his own kirkyard, although local legends claim that the fairies took his body away, and the coffin contains only stones. The huge pine tree that still stands at the top of Dune Hill is said to contain Kirk's imprisoned spirit. Kirk's cousin, Graham of Dutray, was then to claim that the specter of Kirk had visited him in the night, and told him that he had been carried off by the fairies. Having left his widow expecting a child, the specter of Kirk told Graham that he would appear at the baptism, whereupon Graham was to throw an iron knife at the apparition, thus freeing Kirk from the fairies' clutches. However, when Kirk's specter appeared, Graham was apparently too shocked by the visions to throw the knife, and Kirk's ghost faded away forever. Today, Visitors to Dune Hill write their wishes on pieces of white silk, or other white cloth, and tie them to the branches of the trees for the fairies to grant. Unfortunately some people tie plastic confectionery wrappers instead, which slightly spoils the magic of the location and may harm the ecology of the forest. It is also said that if one runs around the great minister's pine tree at the summit seven times, then the fairies will appear. Some people have tried this and afterwards claim to have seen apparitions. Others merely get a bit dizzy and fall over. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.